this is their first machine, and in it was used ferrite. They used ferrite ring magnets. It's a trombley con machine with a closed band. <coughs> they used two ferrite ring magnets, one inside the other, to provide the magnetic field. Now, the second machine they made, which I didn't see, but I did get the data on, is here is a see if you get this in focus. This is made by a company called Riu in Baden Baden. <coughs> And here's the test setup. You see, we use DC drive motors in our work. And the reason I have to use a DC drive motor is this. To balance the big heavy rotor is very hard, especially if it's intensely magnetic, because it saturates the sensors and it's hard to do. And we still haven't solved the problem of balance. So and that does and what that means is if you're not totally balanced, you just don't press the start switch and have it smoothly go up to 10,000 RPM. Yeah. If it was not balanced, it, break everything up. With an electromagnet machine, you can make sure it's balanced without magnetism. And then, it's, then you, we have a sunburst machine where you could have an AC drive motor of known electrical efficiency running at its known speed, <coughs> as opposed to a DC motor of variable speed. Now, they're even more clever. What they used was an AC drive motor of known speed with a three-phase variable frequency converter on it. So they could vary the frequency of the AC motor or the speed by varying the frequency. They went from 50 cycles to 100 cycles, three phase. Very, very clever setup. And they, everything is carefully instrumented. They measure, as in the sunburst machine, they have metering brushes which measure the actual bulges on the outer and inner surfaces of their machine. And then they make measurements about the current flowing through the shunt and what actually comes out after you get the bulge drop in the brushes. And they are using these are copper graphite brushes, which have about two tenths of a volt drop. Now, here is the original data of their second machine, and I have this data in written form. I don't want to go through this whole what all this means now, but basically, as they vary the speed and the strength of the magnetic field in a machine which is electromagnetically excited, this is their second model. The picture I showed you was of their first. Their delta efficiencies go from 2 .15, 1 1.5, 1.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.5, 6, 2.37, 3.49, 2.88, 2.71, 2.71, 3.72, and at power outputs of up to, if this is what's going into the brushes, this is a combination of everything total output around 4 kilowatts max output. So the one they're making now, which is number three, which is the one they want to produce, is the, is the 30 kilowatt machine. This company is a company which makes catalysts, and they use a lot of hydrogen. And they want to use these machines to, for electrolysis of water to get the hydrogen at cheaper rates than they can buy it. Now, going on from that, one day I got a newspaper clipping about a guy in India, some Mr. Tiwari, who's been seen here. And he had taken my results and replicated them in India. And uh, he's had the press follow him, and we've helped each other a lot in getting information back and forth. And in 1977 or 78, somebody wrote me that I ought to contact this man with the results of what I was doing, which I did. And we've been right, we've been pen pals ever since. And he had written me this letter. I recently carried out certain experiments with machines similar to homotromy and did find, and this is now July 4th, 86, did find that electrical power can be generated from space at efficiency much higher than unity, paper prepared by this subject. Now here's a verification. When I've discovered in my studies of rotation that when the thing is rotating, it not only rotates, but it precesses and it mutates, and all of these motions go along with rotation. So rotation brings into existence other motions besides simple rotation. So the real question is, we haven't really described rotation and all the higher orders of rotation, precession and mutation, which go along with it. And we're using cosines and sinusoidal functions to describe AC waveforms, which may not be the correct 
description. And if they're not, I don't know where that leaves us. You see, it's automatically been assumed that these circular functions adequately describe electricity. I don't think so. If the ideas which are classically derived out of the studies of precession developed by Euler in Germany back, I think, in the 1800s, are still used to describe things like the Larmor precession of electrons, electron spin, quantum spin effects. Now, if our description of precession is wrong, all of that information based on interpretations of precession is wrong, too. So, I think we're at a point in science where real basic changes are going to take place. After all, free energy is a real basic change. And I think that the real basic change should be reflected in our ideas about physics and our ideas about mathematics. Now, I'm not an expert on math. I'm an experimental physicist. And I can just want to suggest to you that a lot of the problems that we're having about understanding Tesla's work have to do with the inadequacies of our expressions of our knowledge of AC current. And that can be traced back to our lack of understanding of the precession of the gyroscope in terms of the information which has been developed through my experiments. So with that to think about, I guess we can close. Thank you. Since 1978, Bruce De Palma and a dedicated team of scientists have been developing the N-Machine, space power generator, as the new source of energy for the 21st century and beyond. If humanity is to survive into the next millennium, we must end our destructive tendency to burn fossil fuel and consume the resources of the Earth. And we must expand our minds to embrace new understanding of nature and the universe. The work of Michael Faraday in 1831 with the rotating magnetized conductor has resulted in the De Palma N1 electrical generator. This 100 kilowatt unit is comprised of stacks of neodymium iron boron permanent magnets, the most powerful magnetic material presently available. They must be glued together with an industrial super glue to constrain the intense forces between the magnets. Inside this box is a Pi constructed of stacks. And you can see the forces at play here. Here are the stacks completed in the magnet pi by two end plates. These end plates are made of steel and bring the weight of the overall pi to over 100 pounds. There are 100 individual magnetized pieces in each pi. And two of these pies, once completed, will be joined on a shaft. And sandwiched between them, also connected to the shaft, will be a copper disc. Finally, the magnet pies are wrapped in graphite and then fiberglass windings to complete an N-machine unit. Here you see the copper